asking me to support, and I rise to oppose this motion, Honorable Speaker, by the Honorable Member for Bumula, the Honorable Jack Wanami Wamboka. But allow me, Honorable Speaker, to take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Jack Wamboka for having the courage and fortitude to not only collect signatures and bring this motion, but also to prosecute it. Although he has performed dismally in his prosecution of the motion, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I keenly listened to you on Tuesday when you communicated, made your communication, Honorable Speaker, on this motion. Honorable Speaker, this House is guided, or rather, as you stated, is a House of Rules, and is guided by, not just by the standing orders, but also by a constitution. Honorable Speaker, if you read through at, uh, standing orders 64 to 66, all for our standing orders, you will realize that the Honorable Wamboka's motion falls flat and contra our standing orders and also the Constitution, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it is also true that matters to do with removal of office of public officers, as you stated in your communication, Honorable Speaker, are largely guided also by precedents and borrows heavily from court rulings and the threshold set in. Honorable Speaker, the famous Wambora cases on the removal of uh, former governor for Embu County speaks volumes. Honorable Speaker, in that case, the Wambora case, one of the things that was made clear is that there must be a very clear nexus between the person being removed from office and the alleged grounds on which that removal is sought. Therefore, the question we ought to ask ourselves, Honorable Speaker, has the mover of this motion, Honorable Jack Wamboka, created or shown us that nexus between the person being removed from office as Cabinet Secretary and the alleged grounds of removal? And the straight answer, Honorable Speaker, is none. There is completely no nexus between the allegations that the Honorable Jack Wamboka presented in his moving of this motion, Honorable Speaker. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, if you listen to Honorable Jack Wamboka, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the members who are consulting very loudly. Honorable Speaker, I'm asking if you can protect me from the loud consultations. Order, especially here. Order, honorable members. Yes, members on their feet. Your standing orders say only the members speaking should be on their feet. If you are in transit, then transit to where you are going. Go on. Thank you, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, I was stating that the honorable Jack Wamboka has completely failed to show us the nexus between the allegations that he was speaking about and the person he seeks to remove from office. Indeed, in his own submission, Honorable Speaker, he has alluded to issues touching on procurement and distribution of fertilizer by the National Cereals and Produce Board. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Jack Wamboka is not an ordinary member of parliament. The Honorable Jack Wamboka, and congratulations to him, is a first-time member of parliament, but also serving as a senior member of this House, as a chair of the Public Investments Committee. And therefore, he knows, because he oversights these parastatos, some of these parastatos in PIC, that parastatos are semi-autonomous of ministries. And indeed, the State Corporations Act is very clear that ministers, principal secretaries or accounting officers cannot and must never be seen to micromanage parastatos or state corporations. The Honorable Amboka has failed to show us the nexus between CS Medical in Turi and the, the procurement processes or distribution of fertilizers at NCPB. Indeed, Honorable Speaker, he also failed to inform the House that DCI that has been investigating this matter has already preferred charges against arrested and preferred charges which the DPP has consented to. 
for the prosecution of officers that DCI feels might be culpable on the matter of the procurement and distribution of this fertilizer, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, I was waiting, Honorable Speaker, with bated breath for the Honorable Amboka to show us that nexus he has failed to do so. And therefore, this motion falls flat on its face, on the face of the Honorable Jack Wamboka. Honorable Speaker, it also lacks any clear precision of the violations of law and the Constitution. And the Honorable Wamboka did not show us any clear violation of any section of the law or indeed of the Constitution by CS Medical Inturi. Honorable Speaker, look at the probate value. And I think the Honorable Murugara had alluded to it. The Honorable Owen Bayer has, had also alluded to the probate value of the issues that the Honorable Jack Wamboka has tabled before the House. Honorable Speaker, he took us through what Honorable, the Honorable Member for Kilifi North was telling us were not just excerpts from Citizen, NTV, National Newspapers, Star Newspaper, and other media houses. And Honorable Speaker, we have tremendous respect for our media houses because as a father state, they have a duty like we do to oversight government and the executive, Honorable Speaker. And we must allow our media houses to help us to raise issues that are also of concern to the people of Kenya, just like we raise. But media houses cannot be the basis, Honorable Speaker, in line with our own procedures in this House, to adduce evidence before this House. And Honorable Speaker, I dare ask, if we were to prosecute, if we were to impeach CS Mythical Inturi on the basis of newspaper articles, Honorable Speaker, Allow me the indulgence, Honorable Speaker, to read a newspaper article that was featured by the Sunday Nation on April 14, 2024. And this article, Honorable Speaker, said that House Team Boss on extortion spree. And I'm reading this article, Honorable Speaker, so that we may ask ourselves if I am that House Boss being reported here on an extortion spree, would it be fair for us to impeach myself if that House boss is the Honorable Amboka, the mover of this motion? How fair would it be for me to move the House to impeach the Honorable Amboka on the basis of a newspaper article from a gossip quorum like this one, Honorable Speaker? This article said that the chairman of a powerful committee is on the spot for harassing witnesses that appear before him. Talk of town has learned the chairman calls cabinet secretaries, scheduled to appear before his committee, and demands huge amounts of money in order to be looked at favorably when they appear. The CSAs were heard complaining that the MP is demanding and asks for money using threats at least one week before they appear in his committee. Those who fail to play ball by parting with cash demand a harass during their appearance and negative reports are given on their manifesto. Honorable Speaker, the order. Honorable Speaker, Member for Busia, you are totally out of order to stand up and raise your hands. Order. Honorable Speaker, I read this article because I am, I am pointing to the issue of us using newspaper articles, media reports to impeach state and public officers, including members of parliament, chairs of committees, cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, Honorable Speaker, that we cannot use the basis of newspaper reports to impeach anybody. And that's why I said, Honorable Speaker, if I was that House boss, only that I don't chair a committee, the Honorable Amboka Wanami is a chair of a powerful committee. How do I know? Who would know what this newspaper column was, who it was referring to? Supposing it was Honorable Wamboka, how fair would it be for us to seek to impeach him on the basis of a gossip column, like he's calling on us to impeach a cabinet secretary today on the basis of newspaper and media reports, Speaker, I say, Honorable Speaker, he has completely failed 
to prove his case. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, moving on, Honorable Speaker, is this motion a decoy? Honorable Speaker, and I have listened keenly to the Honorable John Barry, my good friend, prosecute the point like the leader of minority has prosecuted, that maybe we should allow this to move on to committee, and the committee of 11 will then look into the probate issues. But if the probate value of the evidence being adduced by the noble Amboka in the motion is defective up in issue, then we will be wasting valuable parliamentary time. Honorable Speaker, if you want committees to look into this issue, I am certain there are many members, including the member for Kwanzaa, who sit in the Agriculture Committee. A committee of this House is looking into the probate value of all the issues that were presented before that committee and is undertaking an inquiry into this matter. If I was the only Honorable John Wamboka, I would have been patient to wait for the Agriculture Committee's inquiry to get substantive evidence, evidence that has probate value, evidence that has particulars, evidence that you can use to impeach a CES. Otherwise, what he has brought to us, Honorable Speaker, here is not even worth the paper published on these newspapers and the articles he has presented before the House. Just like this article speaking about a member of parliament extorting from cabinet secretaries is not worth our time. We should then not be wasting our Dr. time. Amolo, what is, uh, Honorable Speaker. Order. Senior Council Amolo, what is uh, the problem? Mr. Speaker, I 